away the accomplished works of Jesus Christ. We stand on that. When I minister to people and they think, well, I've done too much and I'm too bad and this is over, it's, it's too late and all this kind of talk. I'm like, don't you think our God, who's omniscient, all-knowing, knew everything that you was going to do or not do before he allowed you to be created? When you don't have that mindset, you're not a believer. Because that's what you believe. Because everything that's written in this Bible that Jesus Christ said that he did, if you don't believe it, you don't believe he is who he said he was, is, and is to come. That is what believing is. I've had many people tell me stuff contrary to the Bible. Excuse me. And my question was them is I thought you was a believer. I am, but. Ain't no buts. Ain't no buts. And the last point I want to talk about, which I've already touched on a little bit, was agony. I think it's so important. Agony, which means extreme physical or mental suffering. Now, now the mental suffering doesn't apply to Jesus Christ in any way, shape, or form, obviously. They may have beat his body. They may have bloodied his body. They may have bruised his body. But they never, in any way, shape, or form, ever touched his mind. So the agony... That, that, that we can relate to comes from all physical and none spiritual or definitely none mental. The Bible lets us know that we are to have a mind of Christ. So we understand in everything that he didn't accomplish for us. He gave us complete power. And I have to remind myself of this when my body tries to report to my brain that something is not working properly in my body. Instead of me looking for, for a doctor to feel good, I immediately say, by his stripes I am healed. And no plague shall come nigh my dwelling. These are the things that we believe and stand on. And the Bible lets us know that we're to exercise our faith. Especially over the enemy. So we don't buy into the fact that our body might be telling us this is wrong or that's wrong. Yes, there's going to come a time where we're going to have to yield up the ghost too. And pass on from this, this, this present life to death. But you're still supposed to be doing that in faith. Knowing that God is in 100 in complete control of everything. And we know this. And we stand on this because of the cross. The cross. The cross that Jesus Christ chose to have himself be crucified on so that we can have a right and access to eternal life. John 10 says, John 10, 10 says, I am come that, that, that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. An abundant life, abundance of life. And he has put stuff down here, things, all things down here for us to enjoy. When you find yourself falling short of the glory of God, do yourself a favor and go back to the cross. Read about the things that Jesus Christ accomplished through the cross. It's not a popular preach. It's not something that a lot of people can scream and shout and how it's it's an agonizing. I mean, the first time. You know, the first time I watched the movie The Passion that, that gives a pretty decent description of what may or may not have happened in the Bible days. No, it happened, but in the way they're telling it. But they do a pretty good job. And before that, my movie was Jesus of Nazareth. You know, yeah, I understand that his skin wasn't white and all these things, but it helps me get an understanding of the beating he took. And that's why when I hear people talk about vaccines and viruses and things of that nature, it, it, so you mean to tell me that he was beat for nothing. If he lets us know by, by his stripes we were healed, that's what he, he means what he says. And everything that he experienced when he allowed them to beat him was for our healing. So when I'm called to go pray for somebody or I'm praying for somebody over the internet, I'm praying in the faith that with every last one of those lashes that Jesus Christ took for, our, for us was for our healing. No plague shall come nigh my dwelling. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. We have to begin to declare and decree these things. They want to medicate people. They want to get people hooked on drugs. They want to get people connected with this world so they can continue to make money off of people. They want to, the, the battlefield is the mind. If you allow them to tell you, no, your, your parents were sick, so you're going to be sick. No plague shall come nigh your dwelling. You need to cancel every contract and terminate every assignment and understand the things that Jesus Christ paid for so that you can have a right to eternal life. You have a right to be blessed. 
You have a right to be whole. You have a right to be healed. You have a right to have your mind delivered from any kind of torment from the enemy. And you understand these things when you understand the cross. Jesus did not go through all that stuff for nothing. Like I said in the beginning, he could have chose any route he wanted to. He could have chose any dispensation to come in. He could have came in this time of dispensation and allowed himself to go through the electric chair. But he chose that time. He chose that cross and he chose that culture. And when you understand those things, you understand the power that, that, that resides in you because greater is he that's in us than we that's in this world. There's nothing in this world more powerful than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And if you don't believe that, you need to get in your Bible and start reading. And you need to receive the Holy Spirit so you can understand what you're reading that will give you power to be witnesses and stand in any and every situation and walk out your salvation with fear and trembling with the power of Almighty God. That's the word of God. So understand the cross. This obviously will never be the last time I preach on the cross. Um, I pray that something that I said will help you understand how powerful that, that, that the God is inside of you is. And that you have power and authority to do everything that God has called and created you to do. And one thing I feel led to say is that stop repeating what the devil is saying. The, the, the power of life and death is in the tongue. The Bible lets us know the word is nigh in your mouth. The word. Speak the word. Stop repeating the devil's nonsense. Stop repeating negative nonsense. Stop. Don't allow it to come out your mouth. You give it life when you do that. Speak the word. Like Jesus told the centurion soldier whose slave was sick. Centurion soldier said, I am a man over who have authority if I tell this one to come, he come. If I tell that one to go, he goes. I know if you speak the word, my servant will be healed. And Jesus told, told said, he told his disciples, y'all see this? I have not seen this kind of faith in all Israel. And he was talking about Israel, his people, not the place. No one has, has this kind of faith. I have not seen this kind of faith. This man told me just to speak the word and his servant will be healed. He don't need me to come and lay hands. He don't need me to come and put oil on his head. He don't need me to call a prayer meeting or a fast meeting. He just says, speak the word. That's how powerful the word of the living God is. But it's only powerful when you speak it. Speak it. Now faith is the substance of things hope for the evidence. So what are you speaking? What's coming out of your mouth? And I've learned if I can't say nothing else, I can say in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that quickens us, that reminds us, that helps us, that comforts us, that gives us the power and authority to overcome everything that we need to overcome in this life you've given us to live. Father, I can never do your word complete justice, but I do the best that I can with what you've given me. And I pray, Father God, there are people out there like me. The Bible lets us know that sheep be God's sheep. And there are those that can glean from the things you've given me to say and do in this life you've given me to live for you, Father God. I pray that your anointing continue to destroy his yokes, Father God. Regardless of what people think, I believe you for all my heart, mind, body, and soul. If you tell me to go, I'll go. Sit, I'll sit. Whatever you tell me to do, Father God, send me, I will go. There ain't a demon in hell or a demon-possessed uh, person that's walking on earth that has any kind of power or authority over anything that you have called us and created us to do. No weapon, absolutely none, no weapon that is formed against us can ever prosper, ever in any way, shape, or form. Just because we see it does not mean it is going to prosper. I just thank you, Father God, for your word, and I stand on your word, backed up once again by the Holy Spirit. It is impossible for you to lie, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I look forward to the manifestation of the promises that you said that we could have in this day and this time that we're living in. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. May God bless you and heaven's face continually and always smile upon you.